The following excerpt is from the book of NL, chapter 13, verse 56. And our God found himself face to face with the rubber demon himself, immune to the righteous power of our king of the sky. And the demon proceeded to coat his leg in subscriber mentaki and strike down our lightning lord, forcing him to an eternal damnation subscribed to the Grand Line Review and receiving regular One Piece content uploaded straight into his divine YouTube feed. And our Lord was pleased with this. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and more specifically, welcome to another One Piece battle, where we take two characters from this fast series and pit them together in a hypothetical match, doing our best to determine a winner as objectively as possible by examining and awarding points for the following criteria. Strength, speed, durability, haki, devil fruit, individual fighting styles, intelligence, and other miscellaneous notes. And to introduce our combatants here today, first up we have the one and only God and L, primary antagonist of the Skypiea arc and user of what is undoubtedly one of the most broken devil fruits within the entire series, being the Goro Goro no Mi. Also, just a quick semantic note, I refer to him as Anel because that is his official romanization according to the One Piece Vivi Card data book. However, the official English source being Viz does translate his name as Enoru, which is how it would be pronounced in strict Japanese as well, so either one is perfectly acceptable. I just use Anel because, well, I prefer it, despite how much it does admittedly sound like anal. But going up against Anel, I present to you an Admiral of the Marines and user of another one of the most broken Logia fruits within the entire series, Borsalino, aka Kizaru. Who many of you are probably going to look at this matchup and say, well, Kizaru wipes this, done and dusted. Next video, please, Grand Line Review. But I would encourage you to stay for this one because this is a surprisingly awkward matchup for this nigh on Invincible Admiral. So with that out of the way, let us commence the battle. And this time around, we are going to start with speed because this goes on to impact almost every other area that we will be examining. So currently, I don't think it's even a question that thanks to certain Devil Fruits, Enel and Kizaru are the two fastest characters characters in One Piece, with one able to become lightning and one able to become light. And it's the latter that we're concerned with most here because, and I always need to point this out when discussing Kizaru, light speed travel in One Piece is demonstrably not the same as we would consider light speed in the real world. If that were to be the case, and every time Kizaru interacted with someone or something at the speed of light, then it would cause an atomic bomb scale of destruction simply due to collision speed. What's more is that there are people in the One Piece world who can follow Kizaru's movements and combat him successfully. Despite that fact, they have nowhere near his speed capabilities, so we need to understand that either Kizaru traveling at the speed of light is a myth, or the One Piece world subscribes to its own constant in that regard, which is nothing compared to that of the real world. And for the purposes of this discussion, I'm going to go with the second, and with everything said, Kizaru is still obviously going to take this category, no contest, because lightning in the real world moves at about one third of the speed of light, so even if we were to scale down what light speed is to remain constant with Kizaru's action, NL would also need to be scaled down, and thus would end up being slower. That's just how things are going to be. So an obvious opening victory for Kizaru. Cutting immediately to the Devil Fruit section now, and despite the speed advantage granted to Kizaru by the Pika Pika no Mi, I am convinced that NL would have a solid leg up due to the nature of both of their fruits. One of the things that people often don't consider when becoming light is that it heavily restricts the movements of its user. Unless absurd amounts of gravity are involved, light is restricted to moving in a straight line. The only way the direction of light can be changed is through reflection or refraction, which Kizaru does go to great pains to achieve through the Yata no Kagami technique, allowing him to reflect his light off various surfaces and calculate calculate a convoluted path to his target. And that works very, very well for regular, primarily rookie combatants. However, NL with the ability to become lightning has full control over the direction of his own movements. Lightning, quite notably, is not light. It emanates light, but the substance itself can be manipulated in a way more akin to most other devil fruits. And given that NL can move at a comparable speed to that of Kizaru, not as fast, not faster, but comparable, this becomes a very bad matchup for the Marine Admiral when considering devil fruit powers alone. This is because Kizaru was forced into a state of needing to make persistent complex calculations just to be able to reach his target with his light form specifically. Meanwhile, Enel has the freedom to move however he so pleases, and that gives him an incredible advantage of versatility, even if he is not quite as fast. So this may be a controversial pick here, but the Devil Fruit category is going straight to Enel. Moving to strength now, and the reason why I decided to cover Devil Fruits before this is because it very much goes on to inform this category, as neither one of these users are particularly fond of brawling without their fruit powers. So in this case, we're going to change the category from strength into power, because strength you know, doesn't really accurately reflect either of them. But in terms of Kizaru, his power comes from being able to strike people with his equivalent of light speed, which often results in devastating one-shot attacks. Although that is once again in terms of rookie combatants anyway, which you could make the argument that NL is. But great example 
examples of this can be seen on Sabadi, when Kizaru dispatched a ton of supernovas with singular attacks, although to be fair, none of them were taken out for good as a result. But NL has a very similar situation going on, as his strength comes directly from conjured lightning with a maximum capacity of 200 million volts, which is, you know, quite a lot. With the lower ends of that scale able to deal with characters like Garn Fall, who was struck with a mere 20 million volts. I mean, I say mere, that's still a stupid amount of power. By and large, NL's raw power is at the very least on par with that of Kizaru, as demonstrated in the series anyway. With the one exception that in NL's case, it is far more wide reaching and far more destructive. NL is capable of destroying literal islands with the Goro Goro no Mi, and he can inflict damage comparable to that of Kizaru's more precise light speed strikes. And so in a shocking twist, power also has to go to NL. Durability. All right, here's a very simple one. And our second NL loss here right off the bat because NL rather simply is not used to being hit by anything, let alone high level combatants. Thinking back to Scapia, every hit that Luffy delivered to NL devastated him. And we're talking about a pre-time skip, pre-gear, pre-hockey Luffy. Now, even if somehow this form of Luffy was able to get in a hit on Kizaru and Kizaru decided not to block it with hockey for reasons, then he still would have taken a minuscule amount of damage in comparison to that of NL. NL is a definite glass cat. He is capable of ridiculous power, but he can also be shattered by a handful of attacks. And in this case, well, we're talking about attacks from a Marine Admiral, so they're going to pack just a teeny tiny bit more punch than a Sky Pia Luffy. One thing I will note though, is that NL is capable of effectively reviving himself from death by using electricity to jumpstart his heart. But then again, that just puts him in a position to be broken all over again. In regards to NL, there is just so little durability present, while Kizaru is at least something of a tank. Now we have an intriguing category being Haki, which both of our contestants have a decent claim to. In the case of Kizaru, he is an accomplished Marine Admiral with a working mastery of both observation and armament Haki. And in fact, he has even been shown capable of using armament Haki in its more advanced application. But as for Anel, I maintain that he is quite possibly the finest observation Haki user that we have ever encountered through his natural mantra talent. Anel's observation Haki rivals, if not even surpasses, that of Dark King Silver's Ray Lee, because they both seem to be capable of sensing life forms over the span of an entire island and combined with his devil fruit, Enel can also achieve a virtual form of omniscience by picking up electromagnetic waves through the air. So while he doesn't have that Kardakuri level of future sight, there is a fantastic argument to be made that Enel is somehow, through a series of great talent or great coincidence, the best observation Haki user that we have ever seen. Despite that, it's, well, it's really hard to place him above Kizaru because Enel's lack of arm and Haki is such an incredible detriment in a matchup of two low gear users. Plus Kizaru does have access to observation and while it's nowhere near Enel's level, I kind of have to give it to the Admiral because access to two forms of Haki will almost always be better than a supreme mastery of one. That's just how One Piece is. And so Kizaru takes it once again. And sadly, this is where things may start to become a bit more of a landslide because when it comes to fighting style and you think of NL, the question then becomes, well, what fighting style? This guy is much more reliant on his Devil Fruit than probably any other user we've seen in the series. It's been demonstrated on multiple occasions that if NL's initial lightning strike doesn't work, then he's kind of out of ideas and forced into very bad situations of improvisation. Kizaru, on the other hand, is a very well-rounded and experienced individual who is used to fighting at the very top levels. That polish is not something that NL could even hope to stand up to because NL here is a bit like a street brawler being compared to a martial arts master. So once again, the god will fall here. To examine intelligence though, look, NL is far smarter than most people, including me, ever give him credit for. This guy engineered the Arc Maxim, which is a triumph of creation, and in battle, despite his lack of plans and experience, he is capable of thinking quickly to some degree, which was shown on one occasion, where he was able to neutralize Luffy by melting a big old water gold and encasing Luffy's hand in it. And Kizaru though, look, I don't know about this because Kizaru's mental capacity is very much a big unknown at this point. He could be one of the most intelligent beings capable of grand strategy within the Marines at large, being masked by a slow, dopey exterior. However, on the other hand, Kizaru was often shown being whimsical, absent-minded, careless, and sometimes flat out reckless. So he could very well be an example of someone who has failed upwards thanks to his incredible power. And because we're unable to pinpoint this, to be perfectly frank, intelligence is going to be a tie. Enel, despite his arrogance, has shown incredibly creative as well as logical thinking, while Kizaru, well, he struggles to display any thinking whatsoever, but given his position, he must be capable of it at certain times. So a tie is very much the best I can give him at the moment. And well, it may be more than he deserves. I suppose the future of the series will lay that out for us. And finally, for the miscellaneous section, I just want to bring up another thing very much 
much not in favor of Enel, which I did touch on briefly, but this man holds arrogance of the highest degree, most certainly a heavily detractive factor in each of the areas that we've examined. Enel has a literal God complex, and so he will often toy with his opponents rather than always selecting the most efficient course of action to defeat them. So while Enel does hold advantages in the areas that we've explored, all of that is purely theoretical and entirely at the mercy of Enel's personality traits. Whatever the case, that won't matter too much in this battle because with a total of five points, Kizaru has come out on top, outright winning in the fields of speed, durability, haki, and individual fighting style, whilst also managing to score a tie in regards to intelligence. But I do want to give it up for Enel here, who has a total of three points to his name, doing far better than I think anyone expected, emerging victorious in the area of power and devil fruit, as well as once again, tying for the intelligence category with his admittedly selectively brilliant thinking. So congratulations to Marine Admiral Kizaru for winning, but I will continue to insist that this is a very awkward matchup for him. If the Goro Goro no Mi were in the hands of another, maybe more capable combatant, then I think the situation would be a very different story. But luckily for him, we have Enel. So well done, Mr. Kizaru. And that pretty much does it for this hypothetical discussion on NL versus Kizaru. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime manga series, then please do feel free to check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenanigans takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on NL versus Kizaru as well as any other hypothetical matchups that you might like to see covered on this channel. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.